now available on Tata Sky channel number 526. Welcome to this conversation with Ashish Raheja of Raheja Universal. Ashish, thank you for speaking with us. Thank you. We're at your uh, very ambitious Mud Island project. Um, you know, it's 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 a bit away from the city, and it's an ambitious uh, project altogether to be building these many homes. What sort of success have you met with so far? Well, it's been long evolving. It's okay. kind of an evolution, so mm-hmm. as to say. It started. The story started, I think, long ago when we had the land in the, right. in the 80s, and more conceived the idea of Spanish villas and Mud Island. That time, I mean, Varso was considered like a yes. beach resort. Yes. So we did it, I and mean, that time we had no plan to sell. We just make it and see what happens. Mm. But as we reached two thousands and the real estate boom started, and people started valuing sea view homes, people started going to Kandal and Ali Bagh. Why not backyard home? Yes, it is far from Bombay, but still closer than going to Ali Bagh or Kandal. Right. So we said, let's try the concept of weekend condominiums, which is our phase two started. We priced it pretty low at that time, on sixteen hundred or seventeen hundred a foot. We had a huge takeoff. We sold three hundred apartments in probably a year, year and a half, and that gave us the impetus that yes, if you give it a little bit, people don't mind traveling a little further if they get a quality of life. And you have a you have a you have a dedicated ferry uh, for the building for the complex. No, no, the two god, the two public uh, public uh, ferries. Public ferries. There's right. one regular and one special uh, premium There, service. I mean, we do know the, of course that the coastal road is going to make a massive difference to this project because yep. there isn't anybody else building in this neighborhood. Um, And I know that you are in conversation with the government about the coastal road. What progress are we making there? A lot of people are in conversation with them. Huh? They are uh, BMC has made a special new division only for the coastal road. Right. They're quite ambitious. Hmm. Both the ruling party, BJP and Sena, want it to happen. And it's not just Mud Island; it'll connect entire island city of Mumbai right up to Charkop and Kandivli. Right. A lot of people will be connected. It'll ease pollution, ease traffic, reduce petrol. The benefits are cascading. What little environment impact it has is more than offset by the advantages it'll give. Hmm. But knowing that's uh, the scale and ambition of the project, it'll take probably, from what I understand, a year to start with the hmm. tenders, etc. Out this year, and then being depending on the phasing and depending on which segments they make first, it'll take a few years after that to execute. What is the pricing on your Madhuram project right now? The new, uh, the new towers that have opened. The up? current towers, which are under sale, Sorrento. I think the two BHK is around one point seven crores, one point six, and mm-hmm. scales up for three and four. It's about twelve thousand a foot plus floor rise. And you're you're not getting a feeling from your customers that it's being slightly overpriced for Mud Island. It's based on market. If we don't sell, okay. we can't. Uh, okay. We have to reduce the price. If it does sell, we increase mm-hmm. the price. It is selling. Yes, we're going through a down spell in the overall Bombay market. But this micro location, we didn't increase the prices too much. Okay. We've kept the efficiency high. We've not increased the loading. There's no frills in the saleable area. Mm. What you get is the carpet area. We disclose it clearly. There's no extras, extras. So the effective bang for the buck in terms of the carpet you're getting is still coming quite effective and economical. What about the the other projects that you have in the rest of the city? You have a Verli bungalow that hasn't sold yet. Yes. Um, what's what's the status of that? We are still team? working on some last uh, ish, some last minute. Uh, we have to get some regulatory permissions, and once those are done, we'll be aggressively putting on the market. Okay. But right now, it's not yet fully on the market. It's not fully on the market. Yeah. And your other projects in Kandivli, you have one going up. We in have in Kandivli. Right what sort of sales are you Verli. seeing? Kandivli is almost sold out. Okay. Our two and three BHK towers are sold out. Probably mm. one or two units left. Mm. And our last tower, which is luxury four BHKs. uh large tickets which right. normally in this market would not sell but because it is uniquely positioned with uh, each apartment having a national park view unobstructed it's it's mm. nearly at the edge of the national park right. with huge decks lavish planning so in the micro market of kandivli the many affluent families of all communities and typically they on a large flat they combine a 2 plus 2 or they combine a 2 plus 3 there are very few dedicated design fours with a large kitchen large master proper toilet mm. and decks so being Few number of flats in that 4 BHK luxury category. It's selling well. We probably have 15 apartments left there. You have uh, you have the the project in Verli as, as well. It's supposed to be very exclusive, very yes. high end. Tell us about that. It's project. called Raja Imperia. Right. Of course, Midtown is a little bit of a crowded market right now. Yes. In fact, to be honest, suburbs in fact is a better market. But our unique proposition is we are not a redevelopment and nor are we a public parking. What that means is our FSI per land is lower, our density is lower. So per acre, you'll have less number of families living there. The facilities right. will be shared by less number of people. Right. The apartments are planned where you have exclusive lobbies. You don't have four or five apartments per floor. Mm. There's a disproportionate amount of facilities and amenities we're giving. There's a club. 
there's Imperial Garden, there's Imperial Park, there's a Sky Lounge on the 55th floor, which currently I think is the highest proposed Sky Lounge, even higher than Air. Okay. And that's only for the building, so it's oh, a private oh, Sky Lounge. What kind of sales have you seen? It is a crowded market, you were right. There's a lot yes. of supply coming in for that segment in that space, yes. in that neighborhood. Yes. What kind of sales have you seen so far? Uh, we are about 50% or 47% sold right now. Oh, okay. And we are about 18 or 19 slabs up. So progressively, by the time we are at the last lab, we hope to be 70% sold. You have, I mean, in all fairness, like a lot of other developers in the market, you've seen a fair amount of delays in, in, in your projects and various really? projects you have. I would love to send you through that. I got an email okay. yesterday okay. from a client in this very project complaining. Your possessions are December, October 17 and you're delivering earlier. I don't have the funds. Okay. <laughs> all right. I can show you documented proof that all our projects, which we can proudly claim, are ahead of schedule or on schedule. Okay. Not all one in a month's delay. Not, not one in a month. All right. We have actually have complaints of early delivery because the taxes start, the school has not started up a child, or they've not got the money ready, or they're relocating from another job, they're not prepared for it, or the rent has not expired. So like, no, you will take it as committed, you can't give it earlier. Okay, all right. So tell me this, uh, you did of course consider an IPO back in 2010, yes. which you then shelved. What are the plans for the IPO? Are you still right, considering no, it no. or no? Not in the immediate okay. future, no. Okay, so how are you handling your fundraisers at this point? Sorry? Where are the, where are the funds coming from at Internal this point? Internal accruals and yes? construction finance from institutions. From institutions, okay. And what rates are you having to raise construction finance? 11.5, uh, 12.5. Okay. Well, I remember during the IPO, there was, uh, you know, in, in your Red Herring prospectus, you talked about about close to 1,200 acres of land bank that you have. Yes. Across eight cities, if I'm yes. not mistaken. Yeah. A lot of it was JD and uh, JD, you were JD. looking at basically becoming a national uh, we were. name. We were. You're still largely, I mean, the, you, you're in a couple of cities, but you're largely a Mumbai, Mumbai based. Yeah, Mumbai centric. Right. We had uh, initial plans, we did fortunately didn't expand beyond that. We have a project in Mangalore which is almost completing. Yes. We have a project in Goa which we'll launch. Mm. But the larger lands, we exited some of the JDs and JVs and consolidated within Mumbai, New Bombay, Kalyan. Mostly in Mumbai metropolitan region. So you're still in Mumbai then? We Mumbai, now we Mumbai, Kalyan. Mumbai metropolitan region, we're focusing. Okay. So tell me how bullish you are on the Mumbai market. I mean, we've, seen, we've seen it uh, in all fairness over the last two years be a little subdued. Yes. Mumbai has always been a strong market. Yes. At what point do you expect it to recover? What triggers will we in see? In the last cycle, so when things went down, Mumbai took the least hit when it started coming up, it rebounded the quickest. Of course, now Bangalore's become another safe haven. Yes. NCR is a largely speculative market as we know. But right now, Bombay is still a safe haven. Mm. But there is a current perceived oversupply, which is what's hurting us. There is money. People have affordability. Economy is decent. Not that it's booming, but it's decent. So there is affordability. But the moment you, if you're buying a car, you're getting it for 40 lakhs, and you know they're go it's going to be available for 35 in three months, you'll wait. Mm. Even though you have the affordability, you'll postpone your purchase. So we're facing a situation where people are postponing purchases. Once they start perceiving the, the demand picking up again, the, the rates rising again, then all the fence others will cross the line. Right. But they seem to be coming close to the horizon. And what's helping in that is the differentiation, as you pointed earlier, which you very pertinently pointed out about deliveries. Hmm. Delivery, delivery is the key issue and that leads to trust. Most of the announced projects, pre-launched or launched, will not be able to deliver on time, if at all. They may be delayed because of litigations, PILs, they don't have permissions. Because of the Devanar fire we were discussing earlier, High Court has passed an order banning any new permissions. In the meanwhile, while they're battling that, the DP34 is causing complications and that value rating for that radar has been announced. Yes. So in the long term, we see supply being restricted to the few branded, organized professional players who will then do deliveries are short. You don't have to distinguish between 10 different ads. For instance, in 10 projects, you'll see three, all of which will be delivered. Yes. At that point of time, there'll be the people moving towards quality. Right so now they've also, been lured by too many yeah. of these schemes, too many of these unbranded developers and then the money gets stuck. Also when, you know, when Radar does come in and then when all developers have to deliver a certain level of quality, they have to deliver a warranty, then trust will not play, play such a massive factor, maybe as you know, it, uh, maybe innovation no. and product will play a factor. Then How yes. are you preparing yourself for Radar? Well, firstly, we already prepared for it. Okay. Uh, you had it percent close, obviously something okay. they'll kick in. Okay. But in terms of disclosure, compliance, permissions, post-launch, delivery schedules, agreements following the MOFA code of conduct, the delivery dates being maybe at the most one or two months here and there, not two years here and there. So we're kind of mostly compliant anyway. But as you said, trust will become less of a differentiator. Yes. But today, in the noise, mm. with so much marketing, marketing is superseding trust. So in a way, RERA will allow the trust to be identified. You can trust A, you cannot trust B. So yes, it will be difficult to comply with, but then we don't have to screen trust anymore. It will speak for itself. We are RERA compliant end. 
So yeah, then among the few players left, mm. yes, we'll have to differentiate with location, innovation and design, execution and the other things that go with a good house. You know, um, you, you mentioned your uh, Goa project. It's a villa project. Yes. It's running to a spot of bother as well, yes. right? Uh, the local villagers want the construction permits uh, revoked, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Now we understand the Goa State Pollution Board is going to e examine the, the project They've one more time. Permission. They have given you permission. Yep. What is the timeline on that project? You haven't launched it yet. No. What is the timeline market on the We're still examining the business plan and doing our market research. Okay. But we have all our licenses, permissions, including environmental. Including environmental. And and these will be holiday homes that you're launching? Goa would be, yes. Okay. There will be second homes. All right. What are the plans now going? We, we know what you have in the market already. Yeah. Where is the land bank? What is the next project that you're considering? Well, we are still working on negotiating JDs and managements for new projects. Mm -hmm. At the same time, our own land banks are working on unlocking. Okay. Uh, we have District 1, which is proposed in Office Park, which will start construction next year in uh, Juinagar near Bashi. Mm -hmm. We have another project right at West End, which is in Malad, right. which is also in navigating, waiting for DP34. Mm. And a couple more in the pipeline, which are a little more longer horizon in Goregao and in Kalyan. You have a Thane Belapur plot of land. I want to mention, yes, yes, District 1. District 1. Um, they, is this the same thing that Foxon was considering for their uh, mobile factory? Uh, I or can't speak about that. You can't speak about that. Well, okay, so tell me this. Uh, will you be subletting that land or are you going to be constructing uh, the IT park yourself? We might uh, we we'll look at various options, mm -hmm. but in uh, current plans to start the first hour next year and then okay. lease it out. Okay, and then lease it out. Yeah. All right. Um, I I also want to understand this from you. you know, when you were when you were considering your IPO, you had a lot of professional top management talent that you had brought in that weren't retained over a period of time. You've lost some of it. Yeah. Is that it, there's a there's a, there's generally a tr tendency in the real estate sector to not be able to retain top management talent which tends to leave the Our sector. Our top management has been there for 20 years. You've had some attrition. Some right? attrition. We are yes. like anybody with attrition but traditionally okay. yes, uh, our absolute top tiers pretty in our traditional players we had since the 90s. Okay. Be it, except for maybe in technical departments mm. but in sales, in marketing, in legal, in other departments our guys have been here since 10, 15, some 20 years. Tell me why the real estate industry doesn't move towards, I mean, it's, it's a family-run business across the country, but the move towards bringing in professional management hasn't happened. And, and not Most specifically your company, but companies across across the sector. Well, it is largely promoter-driven. Promo right. Professional happened in the whole craze of the mid-2000s, but honestly, those professionals are taken from other industries. They don't have the depth of real estate, hmm. which now, as people are understanding, is not just about an engineering, executing a project. You need to understand holistically uh, CEO or CEO of project has to have depart knowledge of architecture, knowledge of regulatory, knowledge of execution, knowledge of marketing, knowledge of sales, mm. which is something you have to learn. There's no degree that teaches you that. Yeah. That being said, many of the players in Bombay started professionalizing in the late 90s, early 2000s. And those are the people I mentioned who we recruited 10, 15 years ago who have gained the knowledge of continued with us. Right. In fact, earlier it was all mom and pop shops, but in 2000s we started creating departments like legal and marketing and sales and geared up which then became the later boom in the mid 2000s. But typically, because a large part of the margin is in land play, and another large part of the margin is in regulatory play, many developers have, may not have need, found the need to professionalize because their focus is on getting the high margin in those plays. Mm. But that's dried up. Right. With now a level playing field for approvals, it is a need, right. the entire differentiator is not in how much more FSI I can take out of a land, or how fast I can execute and how fast I can sell. Welcome back, we're in conversation with Ashish Raheja. Ashish, um, I want to understand from you right now what new markets you're looking at within Mumbai. In the, MMR? The, the, yeah, in the MMR region, where, where are the launches going to be going forward? Well, always we like dark house locations, and by dark house, we mean locations traditionally undervalued, mm -hmm. where you can get land cheap and there's no focus, where you can build your own brand or the project becomes something new for that location. We did it earlier in Chembur at that mm -hmm. point of time, nobody was going to Chembur, everybody wanted to be in Malad or Gorega. Yes. And we did it and we went to Worli and Lower Pala in 2001, probably second only after the Peninsula Corporate Park came in. So the, now finding those dark horse pockets is not as easy as it used to. It's much, it's, it's discovered country. Hmm. But the thumb rule to follow is follow the infra. Right. And follow the infra either road or rail. Hmm. Now I would put most of our bets in New Bombay for the current future because current, every proposed infra is leading that way. The airport is what comes in the highlights and comes in the newspapers. But airport is only what's the glamour project, which is important of course. But the road, the road and rail network they're putting up is fantastic. 
the seaboard station being put by LNT, the widening of the Sain Panvel Road, the two two tracks becoming four tracks, the new Uran uh, track, uh, harbour line constraint to Uran from uh, Vashi, yeah. then the proposed Khansoli bridge across to Ghatkopar. Everything is going to connect the mainland. Because the yes. future growth is the mainland. Yes. There's only so much you can go in the western suburbs towards Vasai Virar. Beyond a point, it's not can, it's lost from the rest. The, uh, even Thana, yes, it's fantastic. But the best of the three expansion oh, regions, be the west axis, the Thana Kalyan axis, or the east Panvel axis, everybody's going to Panvel. Between here and Panvel and, is New Bombay, which is still untapped right now. There's still mostly unbranded projects in New Bombay, except mm -hmm. for a few developments. All the guys are going beyond into Panvel. So that entire region, between Vashi and Panvel, that full corridor on the National Highway 4 is what we would project is the best growth corridor for the future. So, we know of course that you're doing some commercial work there, yeah. but what residential projects would you be launching? Right now, we're working on residential depending on zoning and permissions, but right. we are doing industrial and commercial right now with maybe a small retail component. The business plan is evolving. Because we our project is uh, the two projects and the heart of Vashi, we want to get our user mix correct. And the market for residential as they are today, we are evaluating all our plans. But initially, we intend to start with commercial next year. So obviously, with RERA coming in and regulations becoming that stringent for uh, a market that has not been regulated up till now, there will be some room for consolidation, especially in places like Navi Mumbai, where you said there are smaller builders who might not, yes. I'm assuming, might not be able to comply as quickly if, if the not. Smaller able. developers in New Bombay, even the small redevelopment projects in Mumbai. Yes. So there's an opportunity for consolidation. Just waiting for those guys to re maybe realize that this has to be done professionally. They're running on debt, they're running without a promotion, they're running on fuel. Mm -hmm. But till they reach that point, yes. at that point of time, there will be room for consolidation. And that's when we'll Is step in. But rather than buy, we look at a joint venture or joint development. You look, you look at taking over. Are you, are you already shopping in that market? We for have started exploring since a couple of months. Okay. We started at due diligence, nothing done yet. Nothing done yet, all right. Um, so I'm going to go back to the IPO because that was the last time we saw numbers and your debt at that point was 8.9 billion rupees. Yep. What is it at right now and how are you managing I'm a private it? company, I'm not required to disclose. <laughs> I'm not, you're not, but I'm no, just asking. And uh, the state private for a reason, okay. but it's, it's being man uh, it's well managed. And exactly. we have created, that time we had not launched our projects, we had a significant amount of inventory under construction right now. Alright, as a developer and a citizen of the city of Mumbai, you have that large Acropolis project in Deonar. Deonar has had a huge problem with the fire. Yes. A lot of the uh, residents of that project, in fact, have led the fight uh, for justice and for clean air in yes. the neighborhood. We've had that problem where the BMC has, has not been able to find a solution yet. It has led, like you rightfully pointed out, to a complete grinding halt of all new permissions in the city of Mumbai. A city that desperately needs homes cannot build any new homes. We've not seen any plan or solution being offered. A fresh fire broke out then in Mulund, uh, in the Mulund dump yard. To top that off, we've had no development plan for the city. We've had no DCR. It just seems like the BMC is unable to do its job. Where, where, is, it, where is the city going wrong? Because you're functioning in this city. And, I, you know, and, and as a citizen, I know that a lot of citizens are upset. Where do you stand on this? Look, let's not say BMC is not doing a job. Okay. I know under the current regime, I'm not going to past regimes. They are doing the best they can, but they have their own limitations. Mm. They don't have some of the technical resources to do what they can, but their intentions are good. I know they have dedicated cell for the DP34. They are not, last time the DP was published, it was extended for years on end. Mm. Here they have self-imposed deadlines. They're releasing the new DCR even piecemeal to the public. So they're trying to work on as fast a deadline as they can to unclog it. Even as far as the uh, high court ban goes, they lobbied hard and they got it relaxed, at least not to affect redevelopments, not to affect slum redevelopments, only for new version developments or new green fields. To that extent, there's a breathing window for ongoing projects and redevelopments to complete. And they will, in, uh, they have a deadline to 2017 next year to <laughs> comply. Yeah, the between, between the fact that there is no DP right now, there is no development plan right now. Yeah, the 91 is in place. Right. But you and I both know that anybody with a parcel of land is not going to sell unless he knows exactly what the new DP will True. say about his True. land. Your right? supply so will be temporarily clogged. Your supply is clogged. Your supply is clogged because and of permissions are clogged because you are clogged. currently working under both rules. Right. They, they take the stringent of both, whichever yes. is the worst. Yes. And you mean we're looking at a system here? We're looking at a city that desperately needs homes. Yes. Okay. Isn't this in some way creating some sort of artificial scarcity of homes? It will create artificial scarcity in the short to mid term. But between the three things we mentioned the High Court ban, the uh, RERA, and the DP34, there will be a transition phase. I think even Anuj mentioned it. In the transition, there will be pain points, there will be 
artificial scarcity created for at least two to three years. But then the next batch of projects will be coming under the new DP with clarity of rules which will last for the next 20 years. So that we have a short term problem to give us clarity for the long term. RIRA also will give us clarity for the long term. So we have to go through this painful transition which happened even partially in 2012 with fungible, which caused so us. We will see prices go up temporarily and then they come down. Be, what is the trajectory? Ultimately, market looking? will decide the price. Right. And ultimately, based on market, what we can sell at, you buy that. This is not market forces, right? I mean, we just talked about an artificial supply. Right now, we have artificial, not supply, artificial supply yeah. surplus, okay. which was created because of the pre fungible era, largesse and FSI. There was public markets given out, large FSI is given out, FSI was increased across the board. But now, since 2012, we faced pain in 2012, but it brought down the degree of so vagueness. That, th th these last two answers of yours, can I conclude that there is a certain amount of policy volatility for yeah, your estate in the next city? Years. I, also coming out of the last two years yeah. with the fungible FSF program. Fungible going into the next, yes. There was a transit transition Yes. and now that we all knew DP34 was coming, fungible was a stop gap which we adjusted to in a year. But the problem with policy change is you to go back to the drawing board and go back to all the departments from fire, environment, etc., which causes the interest burden for one and a half years. In the meanwhile, the market changes. So transition is painful, but when we came out of it, we had clarity what we could build. So, so you're saying the BMC might be well-intentioned, but the system is flawed? BMC is well-intentioned, the system and process and the democratic process of suggestion, objection, NGOs, vested interests, some well-intentioned, some not so well-intentioned, creates those systematic delays because it's an inclusive, method of publishing the DP, hence it takes longer. Because of the inclusive method, yes, it is longer, systematic, but everybody gets happy in the end and we'll have clarity at the end. You know, there's a fair amount of research that's that's been done about the fact that the real demand in the city of Mumbai is in the bracket of 30 lakh to 70 lakh rupee homes. Uh, you are not in that space at all, but not why yet. isn't anybody in that space? Because of the cost, the margins. Hmm. Because if you say affordable housing, as you say, is relative to market. Yes. Affordable in Mumbai, as you said, is 30 to 60 or 30 to 70. Whereas affordable, affordable in other cities are 20 lakh. could be 20 to 30. 20, yeah, yeah. In Chennai, it could be 25 to 35, depending. Bombay, the affordability matrix is much higher. So yes, let's take 50 lakhs or 40 lakhs as a benchmark, which is only possible if you calculate the replacement cost of land and construction and approvals. It's impossible in Greater Mumbai. On a thumb rule basis, your approval cost 1500 to 2000 a foot, government premiums, etc. Your land cost, your interest cost. Before you even start construction, you're out 6 7000 a foot. Mm. Then you add construction cost, which is now escalated, even with reduced steel prices, to around 4000 a foot. For affordable, of course, you can bring it down. You cannot sell less than 10,000 and make money. And at 10,000, the smallest flat you can make would be a 1 BHK, 4 500 square feet, 50 55 lakhs at no margin. So it's difficult to reach the 30 lakh mark in Greater Mumbai. But as infrastructure improves, as FSI increases, as the government declogs the approval process, if the simple process of approval goes from two years to one year, then straight away we can knock off 15% of our margin. Right. And uh, that's why we see Panvel, Kalyan, these satellites are the only location where we can get these affordable homes. And to make them accessible, infrastructure is following. How hard is your approval process right now? I mean, on one hand, there's the time delay. On the other hand, we know that there is an added cost to approvals that go side by side. Is that still happening? Uh, or I wouldn't comment on that, but yes, yes, the heaviest cost is a delay cost. The heaviest cost is the delay cost simply in interest cost terms. You launch your project, your sales start one year later, there's that much cash flow or revenue lost in that financial year. And the second biggest cost is the heavy premiums. Yes, the money is going back to the people, it's going to BMC to create infra, so one day it will come back to us. But the premiums we're paying since 2012 are very high. And not only are they high because of fungible and others, they are pegged to the ready reckoner. Right. And the ready, ready reckoner just goes up. Yes. Okay, they went up only 4, 5 to 7% this year. But I mean, there was, were, some, there, yeah, there was some complaint about the fact that the ready reckoner is actually not mirroring the market no, anymore not. because no, the not. market didn't move up over the last two years and the ready reckoner did. It's a compounding effect. Yes, they have been increasing 4, 5%. But when they started in 2004, there was a mismatch. Market was here, ready reckoner was here. There's enough buffer. And the intention was to increase revenues. But when you compounded increase 50 to 20% every year, the market may have, over the last 10 years, compounded increase only 10, 12%. The catch up effect is now the base of the reduction is so high. In some micro markets, it has gone higher than the actual transaction price. So even if I want to sell to you in a particular project cheaper, I can't. Because what they have said is okay, nobody minds paying the highest stamp duty. But not only is stamp duty higher, all your premiums are pegged to the reduction. And uh, of course, the central act, nothing to do with the state, 
is you sell below ready reckoned earnings deemed income you pay 70% tax 35% buyer 35% seller so what do we do it's a cash 22 so that ready reckoned earnings created multiple issues but i think that's because of the legacy of the compounding effect mm. now state governments the bmc has to and the state government have to have their budgets and they have to show increase in revenues so they have to increase 3 4% at least but when already it's so high it creates a cascade effect Last question. So, if if the government, let's say in the state of Maharashtra, specifically looking at Greater Mumbai, found a way to be able to supply land for cheaper to developers looking at affordable housing, and be, also found a way to speed up approvals, would that make would that solve the problem? Two things: if they increase the FSI, will increase, but increase the FSI without charging a premium. They do intend to increase the FSI, but there'll be a premium or TDR cost attached to that. So, right. theoretically, my you increase the potential development but if you pay 100 for the land and again 100 for the premiums the cost is the same right. if you give higher base fsi then yes the cost can go down if they streamline the approval process whatever time we save that margin can be adjusted accordingly and thirdly as far as affordable housing stock is going in the new dp they are proposing 20% mandatory included housing to be given to mada either land or built up which will create which will create a private supply of affordable housing which mada can then sell on its own accord So they have well intentions to increase supply, but they're balancing it with to create revenue. So let's see how that plays out. But again, I reiterate, the real potential is only in the satellites. Only in the satellites. All right, Ashish, we ran out of time, but thank you so much. I wish you thank very, you very good luck thank for the you. next couple of years. Thank you. You can watch live TV on our website mbnow.in. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Magic Bricks Now, and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at Magic Bricks Now. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com forward slash Magic Bricks Now.